There's this massive online world called Oz, and basically everyone on Earth uses it. Anything with a screen can get you in, phones, laptops, TVs, probably even a smart fridge if you tried hard enough. Inside this place, every person has their own avatar that works like a digital clone. This clone carries all your info, handles your business, and even has the same legal power you do in real life. In Oz, people shop, hang out, talk to strangers from anywhere in the world with auto-translate, and do a bunch of other wild stuff. Companies open branches inside Oz. Government offices exist in Oz. People file forms, attend meetings, pay bills, everything. Because avatars carry personal data, whatever they do in Oz can hit the real world directly. And since someone needs to keep this world safe, Oz is guarded by two mysterious digital protectors named John and Yoko, like guardian angels who fight viruses instead of demons. The scene switches to two goofy avatars, an ugly mouse and an even uglier monkey. They're on the clock inside Oz, doing digital chores like it's their normal part-time job. The mouse guy is sulking because he failed to represent Japan in some international math competition. But the monkey tells him to suck it up and stop being a crybaby. The next scene appears to be on Earth, where we see a hot girl riding towards a building. She bursts into one of the rooms and meets two nerds glued to their computer screens. Her name is Natsuki and she announces that she needs someone to help her with a part-time job. At first, both boys turn her down since they're too busy working the Oz servers. But the moment they realize this would be their chance to finally crack Natsuki, they fold instantly and volunteer to help. However, Natsuki only needs one of them, so she picks the ugly guy behind the mouse avatar, Kenji, and drags him along. Meanwhile, back in Oz, a rabbit avatar called King Kazma wipes the floor with everyone in the Oz World Championship, flexing on the entire player base like it's nothing. Meanwhile, Kenji and Natsuki hop on a train heading toward Uaida, her hometown. On the ride, Kenji figures he needs to raise Natsuki up if he's ever going to get a chance to crack. So he shows off his math superpowers by calculating the day of the week Natsuki was born just from her birthday. As they head through town, they bump into a bunch of Natsuki's relatives, apparently her whole clan is returning home. They finally reach her grandmother's house, which is basically a giant old-school Japanese mansion. Turns out Natsuki isn't just some random girl, she comes from a respected historical clan whose ancestors were apparently big shots back during Japan's Old War eras. Everyone gathers for her grandmother's birthday celebration. Kenji is taking in all the warm family chaos when, out of nowhere, Natsuki drops a bomb. She tells her grandmother that Kenji is her boyfriend and fiancé. Kenji nearly passes out on the spot, and the grandmother lights up like it's the best news she's heard in decades. Kenji has no choice but to play along with the act. Later at dinner, the whole family sits together eating, joking, and welcoming Kenji into the group. The house is filled with a kind of warmth he's never felt before. That night, Kenji gets lost trying to find the bathroom. While wandering around, he encounters a kid sitting alone in a pitch-black room playing on a computer. The kid quietly tells him where the bathroom is and goes right back to gaming. Then the peaceful move shatters, someone named Wabasuk shows up. The entire family freezes. They clearly hate this guy, except for Natsuki. Wabasuk is the child of the grandfather's mistress ran off to America long ago and even sold the grandmother's prize certificate for money. Natsuki still likes him though, so she plays a traditional card game with him while Kenji awkwardly sits there, invisible and heartbroken. Later that night, unable to sleep, Kenji gets a weird text filled with a long string of random numbers. Thinking it's some puzzle, he solves it in record time and sends it back. Big mistake. The next morning, two little relatives drag Kenji to the TV, in panic. The news says that Oz has been hacked, and the culprit appears to be Kenji's avatar. Everything inside Oz is collapsing, shopping, work systems, banking, business, everything is going wrong. Kenji tries to log in to check things himself, but he can't. He hunts down the computer kid from earlier to borrow his setup. At that moment, Kenji's friend Sakuma, the guy with the monkey avatar, calls. Sakuma explains that Oz's super secure 2056-digit encryption has been cracked overnight. And because Kenji solved that mystery text, Everyone thinks he broke Oz. Inside the digital world, chaos is everywhere. Kenji's mouse avatar is shown hijacking other people's avatars, controlling them like puppets. Using a borrowed squirrel avatar, Kenji tries to talk the mouse avatar down, but it attacks him. Suddenly, King Kazma jumps in and beats the crap out of the mouse. The kid from the dark room earlier is revealed to be Kazuma, the real-world owner of King Kazuma. But before Kazuma can finish the fight, the two little boys burst in and distract him, letting the mouse avatar escape and steal even more accounts. After absorbing all those avatars, the mouse transforms into a massive god-tier monster with way more power than before. It crushes King Kazuma easily. Kenji barely manages to save Kazuma's avatar before it gets stolen too. The family later learns that Kenji's avatar was actually taken over by an AI from the US military called Love Machine. 
the whole living room goes silent. Everyone stares at Kenji like he just doomed humanity. One of Natsuki's relatives, Shota, a police officer, arrests Kenji and takes him to the station. But Love Machine wreaks havoc on Japan's systems, GPS, trains, communication lines, everything breaks. A massive traffic jam stops Shota's car, so they dump it and ride back home on a motorcycle. Natsuki's grandmother sees the world falling apart and decides she isn't letting her family or her country fall apart with it. She grabs a phone and a giant contact book and starts calling everyone she knows. Firefighters, doctors, emergency workers, government departments, and even national leaders. She calls them all. She gives pep talks, tells them not to give up, and pushes them to keep their cities running. Slowly, thanks to everyone working non-stop, the country stabilizes. Kenji solves another encryption code, giving access back to users in Oz. They discover 55 people also cracked the code the night before and Kenji wasn't one of them. He actually made a typo during the final answer. This clears his name completely. With the systems recovering, more family members make it home that evening, and the whole clan comes together for another warm, lively dinner. Dinner was supposed to be a calm thing, but it wasn't. Wabasuk, the smooth-talking jerk, leaned back and told everyone, especially Kenji and the rest of the family, that they couldn't touch Love Machine. Then he casually admitted he'd helped make the AI in the first place. Why? To make some cash and pay back Grandma. Grandma didn't even blink before she lunged at him with a chopstick like she was auditioning for a martial arts movie. Wabasu freaked out and bolted into the night, leaving chaos behind. After the tension, Grandma decided it was time for a classic card showdown. She played Hanafuna with Kenji, the rules somehow turning into a challenge for the future. If she won, Kenji had to take care of Natsuki, even though everyone already knew she'd set up the fake engagement. Grandma smirked through the whole game and, unsurprisingly, crushed him. Morning came and the house exploded into activity. Everyone was screaming because Grandma wasn't breathing. The hospital monitors had gone haywire thanks to the Oz meltdown and no first aid could reach her in time. Grief turned into action fast. Kenji and Natsuki's uncles pulled together a wild plan to finally stop Love Machine. Uncle Tasu rolled in with a supercomputer from his electronics shop. Uncle Mansu brought his fishing boat because apparently it doubles as a mobile power source. The military uncle added a jeep with a massive antenna ripped straight from the self-defense force. Blocks of ice were stacked to keep the computer from overheating. Everything set, King Kazma, the ultimate rabbit avatar, sent a challenge to Love Machine. The AI accepted, and the rematch exploded across Oz. King Kazma had the upper hand, pounding Love Machine down hard. But the AI tried a sneaky move, sending every stolen avatar at King Kazma at once. Mansuk's fishing boat-powered avatar jumped in to save the day, buying King Kazma time to escape. The rabbit tricked Love Machine into a trap room the team had prepared earlier. The uncles poured water into the trap to drown the AI. But the plan started failing, the supercomputer overheated. And, as expected, Shota had moved the ice to Grandma's room instead of keeping it on the machine. Classic Shota. Love Machine broke free anyway, merging all the stolen avatars into a terrifying megaform. One swipe later, King Kazuma was out cold. Kazuma, in real life, punched Shota for mocking him, because someone had to. Then Oz's clock flickered and started a countdown. Screens around the world showed nuclear plants targeted by satellites controlled by Love Machine. Kazuma went berserk attacking again, only to get eaten alive by the AI's god-tiered bunny form. The family stared at the monitors, realizing the nightmare had escalated. Natsuki called Wabasuk, explaining Grandma had passed. He dropped everything and sprinted home. They read her final letter together, telling them to stay calm. Somehow, amid chaos, they all sat down for lunch with him. One hour remained on the satellite countdown. Lunch became a strategy session. Wabasu planned to dismantle Love Machine's code from the inside. Kenji suggested challenging it to a Hanafuda duel because the AI was obsessed with games. Natsuki stepped in to represent the whole family, betting every single account they had to reclaim the stolen ones. She started winning, racking up Avanars, gaining control, and pushing the bet higher. Then, one bad match left her with 74 accounts, too low to continue. But viewers from all over the world offered their accounts to help her out. Oz's Guardians even gifted her a new avatar skin. Fueled by global support, she went all in for a final showdown and stripped Love Machine of Eve's stolen account. The countdown stopped. For a moment, they celebrated, but Oz wasn't done. The satellite now targeted their house. Panic hit. Everyone scrambled, but Kenji refused to give up. He dove into the 2056-digit encryption himself. Locked out once, then again. He pushed through a third time, doing insane calculations entirely in his head. King Kazma rammed into him mid-hack, delivering a punch that finally finished Love Machine, already weakened by Wabasuk's pre-work. The satellite's course shifted at the last second, landing near the house. The impact cracked the earth open, revealing a natural hot spring. 
In the end, the family celebrated Grandma's life with a joint birthday and funeral ceremony in front of their slightly ruined home. Wabasuk surrendered to the authorities. Natsuki finally kissed Kenji while the whole family cheered, shoved, and laughed around them. Chaos, love, and victory all in one day. Oz was saved and the family survived to tell the story.